Brooks and the analyst desk. Thank you very much, Joe. Woohoo! We got five games just getting that out there. What a series. Um, let's take a look at the team comps. Fnatic chased a record a couple of weeks ago versus Rockat by building a protective vein comp. There are elements of that in here, but it just didn't work out. Yeah, I actually think Fnatic went like really old school with their team comp. Lulu support, Jarvan jungle with uh, a Shen top lane. Like, this is very reminiscent of last year's meta, last year's protect that hyper carry. And while the theory is still sound, they simply were not able to keep all of the diving champions on the side of Rockat off of Reckless. And the longer the game went, the more powerful Overpower became, and all props to Overpower. We haven't seen him on Cassidy and he delivered. Yeah, and I'm just wondering about Soas, honestly, in that top lane. You know, fourth game, fourth champion, I believe it is. He just doesn't seem to be able to either feel comfortable with one of them or was building it to sort out the team fight. But honestly, there was a number of times he just was not on the same page of his team. He went in, everybody else was going out. Yeah, and uh, on the same token, actually, in the early to mid game again, both teams actually sometimes going in when they shouldn't in a little messy, messy fight going on. Yeah, there were some interesting calls. I mean, like, you go all the way back to the very early game where uh, Jankos got caught out in the jungle. Cyanide was punch uh, punishing him. Thinking about flashing over the Baron pit, Jankos had about 150 HP, and randomly Yellow Star just flashes over and misses the Glitterlons. Uh, some weird decisions. Fnatic got ahead early, but because their team comp is a reactive one where you protect the AD carry, they weren't really able to siege. They weren't really able to push Rock out further, despite the fact that they were in the lead and had some control. Yeah, and we were talking to Krepo backstage. He sat with us in the green room watching this match, and he, he was talking about Salavo, and he was like, saying Rock out could have punished some a lot earlier than this. If only it had been a pickaxe into Static Shift early on wave clear, because they didn't really have any wave clear other than Salavo. And as you saw, once he got going, once he got fed, my God, he was doing a lot of damage. Yeah, bring on the resets. Let's actually take a look at a team fight of that game where Rockat gets the upper hand, um, starting in the bottom. Yeah, so it's quite late in the game. I mean, this is about 36 minutes in. At this point in time, you've already got the very clear distinction that Rockat are taking charge and taking control. The most impressive thing, as we roll the clip out, you'll see is that Rockat really dodges the key abilities. Pay very careful attention to Soez's taunt. The moment that Soez shows himself in lane, Rocket peel back. Four members moved out of the way to ensure that Soez could only catch the support. So because no multi-man taunt happened, Fnatic were just un uh diving them. Overpower pulls all of the attention. He dives into to Fnatic's backline while the rest of Rocket is dealing with the front line. And this is the, the, the mobility we were talking about. The resets come in, the dashes, Salava, Yankos just chasing everybody down. They aced Fnatic and they did not lose a team fight for the next 20 minutes until they closed the game. And that was exactly what I was talking about. You could tell actually that one if, we, if you'd have seen it just a little bit, a few seconds before, you'd have seen Rockout were ready. They'd already dodged one skill shot. They were ready and waiting for Soas to turn. They knew it was coming. The second he did, quickly moved out of the way and then pounced because they had clear communications going on. Whereas Soas, he was the one that went in on his own. All the four others went back. If Lulu would have got a uh, wild growth onto Soas, he was in on top of four or five members. He yep. would have bounced a lot up and they could have turned that fight. But instead, communication seems a little bit lax for Fnatic right now. Nerves, clearly a I big agree. thing for them. Whereas Rockat, they seem to be crystal clear. I think the team fights in this game, Fnatic was struggling. But I also want to highlight the fact that the Syndra performances from Peke have been very hit and miss. Mm -hmm. Game one, yes, he was playing against a zillion, zillions you know, can counter him. But we didn't really see Peke killing people. He had great stuns. This time around, the Syndra was really next to non-existent. It, it didn't really have much presence, didn't really fit the composition. There was no Orianna to pick because it's been banned out. Rocket's mid-centric ban strategy <laughs> seems to be paying off. Yeah, absolutely, because, you know, building the Zhonya's late, as we said in the first game as well, if you build it earlier, you can hold in there a little longer. But in a case like this, if you don't have damage on any other champions except for the Vayne and she can't roll in, what are you going to do? Well, that's a very good question. It's a question that Fnatic are going to have to answer right now backstage because they need to figure out what to do because, again, Rocket have responded. They've done it two games running. The question is, can Fnatic pull something new out? Can they surprise Rocket? Because Rocket have kind of played the same for all four games so far. So they probably expect to do the same thing once again. They could pull a surprise out. We know Overpower's pulled out some weird things before, like Mordekaiser, but who knows? For, I think it's on Fnatic to really make the difference here. It is, and to, to drive the point, uh, point home further, Fnatic opted into this strategy. Fnatic let Kassadin through, and they said, we dare you to pick Kassadin,
because we have a strategy, we have something planned, it didn't work. So not only do Fnatic have to I over... I thought we said that. Exactly. <laughs> but not only do Fnatic have to overcome the strategy of, or overcome the mindset problem of, we failed at our own game, yeah. they now need to out-mind game Rocket. Rocket's got the, mo the momentum. If anyone was watching the player camps right at the end there, when Reckless got caught and died, he threw his head into his hands. And it's not often you see Reckless really looking distraught on stage. So it's, it's going to be tough times. Now one thing to take note, I believe Fnatic are on blue side in this next match. Remember, Cogmore was banned in that last game. That's what Reckless has been doing really well on. Obviously made him forced to switch to Vayne. If they take Tristana off Salivar, what is he going to do? Because he's at it, I think, all four games. Yeah, you got to wonder why take the risk yeah. of that comp for Fnatic in that last game. What are both teams going to result to? We have a fifth game on our hands. Will Fnatic push on in game five or will Rockout pull off one of the biggest upsets in European LCS history? Find out when we